Are you kidding me? I was getting ready to do a B-roll shot and I accidentally hit the keyboard. But guess what it says? An error occurred while preparing the installation. Try running this application again. Let's try again, shall we? Let me sit down. It's 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 been too long. I've been stressing out. So if you guys have been paying attention to the community posts on this channel, you've seen that my main music production computer, the one that I purchased to build this studio that you see here, decided to crash. And I nearly lost all of my music, my important stuff, everything on the hard drive. And so I thought this was a perfect opportunity for me to make a video that I've never made before, which is how to manage yourself if your Mac computer crashes. I can't speak for PC, I don't have one, but MacBooks, iMacs, what do you do if your Mac crashes and you seemingly lost everything? So I'm gonna go over some of the possible problems, some of the possible solutions to those problems, what I did to fix mine, and why buying a brand new computer like this to solve all of your problems should be a very last ditch effort, a last resort. So what happened was I was working on a video for Isotope and their YouTube channel. You guys know I've been making videos for them. My iMac decided to crash one day. It happened sometimes. I restarted my computer, did things that I normally did, opened Final Cut again, and it crashed again and again and again. Then I did everything from restarting to, to try and copy and paste my libraries, everything. Nothing was working. Everything was crashing my computer, even on the live stream. So then it got to the point where I was so desperate, I wiped my entire hard drive and reinstalled Big Sur or update to Big Sur clean install, no backups used, so that I know for sure it's not a software issue. And this is how it went. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I was getting ready to do a B-roll shot and I accidentally hit the keyboard. But guess what it says? An error occurred while preparing the installation. Try running this application again. I don't know what that means. So what do you do in this situation? What was there for me to do? So if you ever, for some godforsaken reason, find yourself in the same situation as me to where you don't have Apple Care, your machine can't be repaired by anybody else, you don't know what the problem is, if it's software or hardware, these are the things, the fixes that I personally tried out to find my problem so that you don't have to go through the same. Fix number one is to reset your VRAM, your PRAM, or your SMC. Now, I don't have to explain what these things are because it's not really that important. All you need to know is that sometimes they need to be reset because it causes system errors. They manage your system. So the way to do this is, first, you wanna shut down your Mac. Then you turn it on and press and hold these four keys together. Option, Command, P, and R, all at the same time. Now you can release these keys after about 20 seconds or basically after it seems like your Mac is restarting again. So you shut it off, you press these keys, you hold them until your Mac reboots itself after you have turned it on again. Does that make sense? For resetting your SMC, at least on an iMac, all you have to do is turn off your computer, unplug it, leave it unplugged for about 20 seconds and then plug it back in. I'll leave some links down below so that you guys can check out whatever uh, computer you have, you can get your own process. Now for a lot of the Apple problems that I've personally dealt with, usually this resolves the issue, especially if things are freezing, you get the spinning wheel of death, the beach ball, whatever they call it, um, or you're getting crashes. Usually this fixes the problem, but if it does not, then you wanna move on to fix number two. A bubble just came out of my mouth. <laughs> which is to run first aid on your drives. Now, first aid is a tool that's found in disk utility, and this is where you can do things like formatting your drive, mounting and unmounting external drives, or even repairing any kind of hard drive attached to your Mac or installed in your Mac. Usually doing first aid is something that is a very simple process and it fixes a lot of issues as well. You just click a button and then it's done. You let it run. But basically what you wanna do is uh, you just open up Disk Utility. You can use the spotlight to search it or you can just find it in your applications. On your Mac hard drive, you would click on it and then you would click first aid and then click run or whatever the thing asks you to do. Now you let it run and if it 
succeeds, then you get the green check, you're good to go, that's done. But if you get a red thing, that means your Mac can't be repaired or have first aid done on it, uh, which means there's a deeper issue, something that disk utility can't really fix. What I did after this is I went to the container, which contains my partition of my bootable Mac drive. And then I did first aid on that. And I still got a failure. Another thing that you can do is run first aid on the top tier, because basically with Macs, you have your hard drive, you have inside of that hard drive is your container, which contains, boom, the third branch down, <laughs> your actual data for your Mac. So I did first aid on all three tiers and they all failed. I had no idea what the problem was, but it is something that is also worth a try. I recommend you do it instead of spending thousands of dollars. Back up your Mac before doing this stuff. Please do that first because you don't wanna lose any of your stuff. But if you're like me, you don't have access to any of that stuff. One thing that I would recommend is to put your Mac into target disk mode, use another Mac and you would hook it up to the Mac that's having the issues that you need to get the data off of. Basically target disk mode turns your Mac into an external hard drive to be mounted on whatever other Mac that you're using. And that way you can drag and drop most of your files that are located in your folder to this new Mac. It's exactly like an external hard drive. That's what I love about target disk mode. And that's how I was able to save my music. So I saved all of my project data, which is amazing. So before you enter target disk mode, you're gonna need a few things uh, to make this process basically work. And one of them, first of all, is gonna be a second Mac. That's the one that you're gonna extract the data to from the Mac that's not working. And the way that you connect them is gonna be through USB-C, Thunderbolt, or Firewire. It depends on how old your machine is and what connectors it has. Next up, obviously, you'll need a Thunderbolt cable, a USB-C cable, or a Firewire cable to connect the two Macs together. Now, you also need to have File Vault disabled because you won't be able to access those files if it is enabled. And then also you wanna make sure that there is no firmware password or on your Mac because you're not gonna be able to access things because the password is blocking it. The way to enter target disk mode is very simple. All you have to do is restart your Mac the way that you normally would. Uh, if you have to force restart it by holding the power button, then that's another fine way as well. But when you do restart it, you press and hold down the T button until the screen comes up that shows you you're in target disk mode. Now from here, you can literally drag and drop the files like a regular external hard drive, or you can also use this mode as uh, kind of a migration assistant. You open up migration assistant and you use it as an external to reinstall some of the stuff or migrate some of the files from your old Mac to the new Mac so that you can save your files. Fix number three is going to be to run diagnostics on your Mac to check and see if there are hardware failures on the inside and also to check the software side of things. So I'm putting this both in one because you're running diagnostics. One is for actual hardware and one is for the software on the machine. And so basically the way to run Apple Diagnostic is to disconnect every single external device that you have connected to your Mac in USB-C, USB, all the ports that are taking something. If it's not a keyboard or a mouse, disconnect it all. And then shut down your Mac, turn it back on, and you hold down the D button until the Diagnostic Tools appears up. It runs, takes a few minutes, and then you check and see what error codes it gives you. You do wanna note these codes so that you can Google them later on your phone or whatever computer device that you have that's actually working. Uh, but if you have no codes, then basically your hardware theoretically is fine. Sometimes there are issues that it doesn't scan, but usually this stuff is, it, it works. As far as checking for software that may be the issue, I don't know if there's a specific tool that allows you to do this in one go, but what I had to do is uninstall applications individually and then recheck to see if my computer would work after I uninstalled those. Very annoying, especially because if you have a lot of programs, you have to uninstall each and every single one of them or all the plugins you have to check and make sure it's not one of those. It's a very cumbersome thing, but it will save you thousands of dollars if you're willing to go through it. And I was because I don't like spending money. So I literally installed a bunch of plugins. Uh, I did a lot of Googling. This is another thing that you can use to check and see if anybody else has had problems with certain programs that you think might be the culprit. Now that kind of brings me to this next one because kernel panics is something that happens to a lot of people and they don't know why. I don't even know what a kernel is. Big elbow drop. Talk about that incredible athleticism. Look at this. Oh, and there's a super kick. 
something in the software kind of goes crazy and then it just like shuts everything off. That's why I was getting glitching on my screen and stuff was just going haywire. Um, sometimes it can be software that causes this, a bug that's in the software that you installed, but other times it can be external devices. I looked up that Apple confirmed certain USB docks or attachments that you plug into your computer. If you do something that wakes up the computer without tapping the power button, it causes the system to be unstable and then that causes the crash. You have to restart your computer, unplug everything. Once the computer restarts, you plug everything back in. So in my case, I have this really cheap Amazon uh, dock that I bought and I thought maybe that was a problem. So I haven't used it since. Uh, if you do have a very cheap dock, one that came from Amazon, one that's not by a reputable company, um, that may be your issue as well. It's, it might be causing your system to be unstable. You might want to not use it anymore and see if that fixes your, your problem and get something more high quality. Finally, fix number five. This is the one that did it for me, guys. I got so desperate because I was out of work. I went and I bought a brand new 5K 2020 iMac. I installed my RAM from the old machine because it was upgraded. I turn it on, I start installing programs and what happens? It crashes. This is an untouched iMac, brand new out of the box. That can only mean one thing. All the issue was. This is all it was. This, one of these, or both of these? This Timetech 16 gigabyte. And here I am after six months, it's crashing my machine. So that this, not buying a brand new computer, not any other stuff that I just mentioned, not uninstalling all these, this little stick right here is the issue. Do all the stuff that doesn't cost money and that's not time consuming. Resetting the PRAM, resetting all that stuff is a very simple fix. Doing first date on your computer is a very simple fix. You just click one button, let it run for a couple minutes, maybe an hour. Just try and update the RAM. Buy new RAM, buy official RAM from Apple or Crucial, they're very good. And you could save yourself $3,000. Now I'm stuck with this machine. I'm not stuck with it, I can take it back. But this has Apple Care. this one doesn't. If something like this were to happen again, I would actually have Apple Care. I wouldn't have to worry about doing all this stuff. I just take it to them and then they just do it. So I know this wasn't the most, well, it wasn't creative at all uh, video, but it's something that I wish I had because there, there are videos out there that teach you how to do all this stuff, but it's spread out and, and separated. I promise we'll be back next week with some funner videos, but I just wanted to get something out because it's been two weeks since I've actually posted something. So hopefully this helps somebody. Um, but also I just thought it was a very important thing to mention. Um, I'm talking too much. This outro is too long. Thank you. I love you. Stay legendary. I'm out.